एंड जब इनका कॉल आया था मेरे पास आई थिंक समन फ्रॉम द टीम कॉल्ड इन दिस सेड सर इवेंट है द थीम ऑफ दिस इवेंट इज इज अनहर्ड एंड वी थिंक यू विल बी परफेक्ट फॉर इट बिकॉज यू आर मोस्टली अनहर्ड ऑफ तो मैंने कहा थैंक यू फॉर द रियलिटी चेक बट ये कौन सा कॉलेज है तो बोला सर बिट्स पिला नहीं उधर आगे का मत पूछिए सर बता ना सर में के के बिरला गोवा कैंपस पता है ना इंटरव्यू में भी सिर्फ बिट्स पिलानी तक बोलना है घर वाले भी बैठ के जज करते होंगे कहा लड़का नहीं दिख रहा है वहां वो गोवा गया अच्छा छुट्टी मनाने गया वो नहीं नहीं पढ़ता है गोवा में पब्लिक को क्या लगता है कि गोवा में कॉलेज है मतलब क्या वाई वाले ने रशियन लोग आते होंगे ना प्रैक्टिकल और ओरल दोनों वाईवा की बात कर रहा हूं दोस्तों टेक टॉक है समझ के रिएक्ट करा रहा हूं यहां आके मिला क्या मतलब फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर बागा बीच ऐसा लगता है कि यार फर्स्ट सेकंड सेमेस्टर अगोंडा जाएंगे मिला क्या भोग मालो कैन यू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश अबे चुप बोग मालो मैंने भी यहां पे ट्राई किया था एंड मेरा हुआ नहीं क्योंकि उस टाइम पे ड्यूएल डिग्री नहीं थी ना उनका सही है यार नंबर भी कम डिग्री भी डबल मिक्सोलॉजिस्ट अर्लियर सबसे ज्यादा मिक्सिंग तो तुम लोग कर रहे हो यहां ब्रांचेस में क्या क्या ब्रांचेस है ये क्या बायोलॉजी एंड कंप्यूटर साइंस क्या कुछ कुछ तो कोई क्या इलेक्ट्रिकल इकोनॉमिक्स ये क्या है क्या जीडीपी में से करंट निकलेगा क्या है ये ये कौन से ब्रांचेस है भाई बट इट्स इट्स रियली नाइस आई जोक आई जोक एंड आई स्टिल टोल्ड देम आई सेड डोंट लुक एट मी एज अ फिनिश्ड प्रोडक्ट Because I'm still work in progress. I'm I'm just trying different things out. So I said, "Yar, I'm probably not going to come. I don't have anything to say. I said, 'No, sir. We have a lot of distinguished speakers. We have Kajal Agarwal. We have. I said, 'You had me at Kajal.'" Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
Are you feeling it yet? Good. And in the end, I would like to summarize my TED talk by saying this. No matter what you do in life, remember, we're all going to die. Thank you so much. I, uh, let, me, let me start uh, by asking this question. Uh, <clears throat> how many of you here chose engineering uh, by choice because you were really passionate about learning the science of engineering? <laughs> okay, that's not a bad number. That's okay, now, 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 now make some noise. If you are someone who has other dreams, dreams that are not really related to engineering. Sub seat waste karne aage. Sare seat waste karne candidates say sir. This is our problem. Pehle civil engineer karenge. Then we'll get masters in finance. So that we can work as a tester in CTS. Then we'll get married, have two kids. At the age of 45, you're like, but I always wanted to be a photographer, yaar. <laughs> How do I turn my life around? Nahi hai, maa se you turn nahi hai. Bacho ke school fees barne hai. Tere bete ko bits mein jaman admission dilwana hai. Teen laak annum. Maa se you turn nahi hai. You turn abhi hai. So I, 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 at a very young age, I, I wanted to be an actor. And uh, I was actually pushed into acting. Uh, I'm, I come from a boys' school. Boys' school se ho koi hai yahan pe? Haan. Jada khush mat ho. Baut hi ganda childhood raha hai inka. Mera bhi. It's a miserable, lonely place. The only time, the only happy moment in boys' school is when you're going to the school and saamne ho girls' school ka gate dikhta hai. And you're like waiting ki watchman bulaye ga and you're like, aao ki anne hai. I, I went to a boys' school and uh, the thing with boys' school is every year we have this school annual day and uh, there's this play that we do every year and because it was a boys' school, we didn't have girls to play the female characters in the play. <laughs> so my teacher called me one day and he's like, Iske dimple aate isko ladki banao. <laughs> like, so everyone's excited and I'm on stage. That was my first acting performance and apparently I was so good at it that I was cast as a woman for the next five plays. <laughs> And as much I hated, as much as I hated how it began, I was like, maybe I like this, you know, not being a woman. <laughs> Pretending to be someone that I'm not. You know, maybe I just, this is cool, you know, I can go in front of an audience and just become someone else. I can start feeling like I'm a different person. I was like, I, I think I like this, I, I want to try more of it. And then in my ninth grade, I got my first role as a, as a, as a, as a man. <laughs> And it took that long. And, and, and then uh, by the time I graduate, uh, by the time I hit uh, school, well, when I was out of school, I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I think I, think I, I, I want to be an actor. And then my dad, he took me to his room and he played this real, really nice, cute game with me. Uh, it's called uh, the belt game. <laughs> Bawati funny game. Hai. So I'll tell you the rules for those of you who haven't played this. Uh, my dad has a belt. And uh, he has to hit the target, which is me. <laughs> and if he misses, he loses 10. But if he gets, he gets 100. He was an amazing player. <laughs> By the end of the game, I came out of the room and I was like, I want to be an IITian. <laughs> so I said, so, so as much as I hated getting into college, because I knew that I kind of wanted to become an actor. I wanted to go study in NSD and stuff like that. And... Uh, and those four years, when I look back now, are the best years creatively for me. Because I just had so much free time. <laughs> I just didn't know what to do. Like, you give anyone an engineering hostel and an internet connection, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> things happen. And the next thing I know, I'm like, we have a theater club and we're doing plays that like five to ten people are watching, but we didn't care. We're, we're missing our uh, minors and we're doing writing some sh shit plays and all of this is happening. We formed a band. We formed a band, rock band in college. We had like Linkin Park t-shirts. Like we grew hair and we had headbands. And we were singing stage pe Anu Malik. Ke gaane gaate the. <laughs> we did it. And by the end of those four years, I was like, I think... Entertainment and performance arts is what I want to be. 
in. I, this is something that I enjoy so much and, and I want to do this. So I was, I made this decision to go to Bombay from Bhopal and uh, I wanted to be an actor. So I went to Bombay and in my head I was like, I, all my friends are saying that I'm a good actor. So I think Karan Johar will see me and I think in two months I think I'll get a film. Now this is when I got the first shock of my life when I went to Bombay. I realized that Karan Johar doesn't know I exist. I was like, how do I deal with this now? So I said, okay, you know what? I am going to get a job and I'm going to save some money and then come back to Bombay and then try being an actor. So I got a job and my job immediately took me to London. And I was working for a telecom company, a civil engineer working for a telecom company as an IT tester. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I said, okay, you know what? I guess I can earn, earn more money for my struggle. So I started working for a year and a half. I thought I gave myself a deadline. I said, I'm going to work for a year and a half and then I'm going to just quit by the end of the year. By the end of the first year, I had zero savings <laughs> and I had no money and I was like, and then my client called me and my boss, I still remember this moment because uh, I think it was an important moment for me. He called me and he said, uh, we want you to become, I was working as a contractor for them. So he said, we want you to become a permanent employee of the company and we want to process your visa and uh, if you want, if you choose to continue to live here, you can also become a resident of this country. And I was like, Ye kya ho hai, yaar? because in my head, I was like, I, I was just not finding the courage to make that, that decision. Should I go and be an actor or should I just say yes to this? Because I spoke to people and everyone gives you different opinions. So my dad was like, is that even a question? <laughs> so in my head, I was like, and I, and I just went away for a while and I, and I, and I thought about it. And, and there were two options. The way I saw it at that point, there were two options, two things. I had only two options. One was if I go back and become an actor, it can work out really well and I can be a decent actor and my career goes well and I'm happy that this happened. Two, it can suck. I can be like, I, I will have no career as an actor and this would have been a really bad decision but I will come back knowing that that's what happens if I go down that route. And this is the learning that I have from that route and I come back thinking, at least I tried. So I did not want to have that regret in life later that I don't even know what happens if I do that. Anytime you are faced with a choice like that in life, where you don't know and you don't know if you want to try, make the decision to go try. So I slowly broke it to my parents. I said, I don't want to do this. I want to be an actor. I've been telling you this for years now. I don't know why it is so difficult for you guys to understand. I want to be an actor. My mom was like, listen, it's not possible. It's not realistic because my, my dad uh, didn't have a job at the time. We were a single income family. My mom was the only working uh, member of the family and she was paying for my brother's college. So they kept bombarding me with all this middle class information that I didn't need. And then I was like, this is what I want to do guys, at least let me try. And I, I, I my dad obviously, he stopped talking to me at this point. So there was a lot of tension, a lot of friction in the house. So I decided to just go away from the house. And I went for the next four years, I just went all over India, wherever I, I wanted to do plays, I wanted to be a theater actor. So I, I went and worked with whichever company across India was looking for actors to do plays. I went and worked with them. I went to Bangalore, I went to Chennai, I went to Hyderabad, I went to Delhi. I did theater workshops, I did theater plays. I was like, oh my God, this is cool. You know, I didn't get work immediately all the time, but I was like really enjoying it because this is what I wanted to do. And two years into it, after using up all my savings and all my theater money, I realized I'm not making any money. Like theater was not paying me anything. I was getting, I was putting in three months of rehearsal, two months of rehearsal for a play. And at the end of that, I was getting 650 rupees a show, 700 rupees a show. So I was like, this is not working out. And it is, so I started doing survival jobs. I would go for rehearsals in the evening. And during the day, I would do whatever job came my way. Like any job, like people, people uh, launch phones in malls, you know, like there are uh, mall activities that happen that nobody cares about when you go to a mall. There's the one loser guy who's just trying to post something. I was that loser guy. I got paid like 3,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks. I didn't care. I really needed the money. 
And I parallelly, because I always wanted to be a film actor, I was auditioning for multiple language films. And this was five years now. Five years since I quit my job. Of that. And I finally cracked two films in the lead role. And both of them happened to start at the same time. I was like, yeah, le. I was like, how do I deal with this now? So I was, I, I went and spoke to the director of the first film. I said, can you guys push this and, and can we shoot this later? They said, no. He said, you know what, just say no to the other one because we are anyway rolling with our film in, in, by, the, by the next month. So I said, please, but I don't want to lose out on an opportunity. He said, no, that's fine. Just say no because you're anyway the lead of our film. So let's focus on our film. So I called the, the second guy and I said, you know what, I'm not going to do this because I have to shoot this film. And I said no to him. We start rehearsals for our films. We, for our film, we start workshops, we're practicing, we're doing everything. And one month before the shoot, I wake up to a newspaper article about our film, talking about the film uh, that is going to uh, start shooting. And it said uh, the lead of the film has a different name on it. It was someone else's name. And I was like, what? This, this can't be true. You know, I was like, no, there's no way. I immediately, my dad showed me the clipping. He said, isn't this the director that you wanted to work with? I was like, yes, I've been rehearsing. We're shooting next month. And then I was like, I, I start panicking. I, I, I pick up the phone and I call him. And, and the guy doesn't answer my call. And he doesn't answer my call. I go to the office. He, the, the, the assistant says he's not there. And I chase him for a, a couple of days. Then he calls me back. And he says, listen, Naveen, um, you're a really good actor, uh, but we, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a producer who's launching his son, and I, I, I think uh, my, my company also uh, wants to launch him because he's funding more than 50% of the film. So there's nothing that, that I can do about this, nothing personal, so we're going ahead and shooting it with him because his, his dad is kind of funding the film. And that's when it just hit me. I just understood the world of movies at that point. It's a business. It's a business at the end of the day. They don't care about my dreams or my career. They don't care about anyone's dreams. It's all about money. It's all about who can fund the film, who can make me a profit before the film releases, which actor is going to ensure a, a, a certain business for the film before the film releases. That's what I'm going to cast. I don't care about how hard anyone has tried, how much talented anyone is. That's not how the movie business works. So I realized at that point that I have to become someone that is commercially viable for a producer. That a producer will look at and say, hey, the audience likes this guy. I'm going to put money on this guy. And this is the clarity or learning that I got uh, at the end of five years now. And also I had become a better actor by then. Uh, so, but then my family and my uh, relatives, everyone was, was just too worried. They wanted, they were looking to me for results. I'm not the government. Ki saal baad results nahi and people will still like me. I was like, I was like, what do I do? You know, like my, it was that phase when all of my friends were getting married. People are having kids and posting their annoying baby pictures on Facebook. The, the more successful people around me got, the more pressure I started to feel. I, I started feeling. Like my relatives would come to me and be like, just go back, just do the job. This is not something that's going to happen. It's not a practical goal that you've got. You've wasted five years already. Do this. It was just insane. Just feeling that pressure of just seeing your own. I love my siblings. But every time my brother buys a new car in America or buys a new house, I become that kid in the house who's done nothing. Like immediately my parents start feeling it. They're like, Yaar, usne to kuch kar liya life mein ye to uzar nikla yaar. And it's not an easy feeling to live with, you know, when your own parents, more than, more than the world, it's, it's, it's that disappointment that you see in your own parents' eyes. You know, you don't want that. You want them to be happy as a kid. So I made the second most important decision of my life at that point, which is to just declutter and just eliminate all the chaos in my life. All of these people, the relatives, parents, friends, anyone who doesn't believe in your dream at that point, who doesn't really push you to try once more, to try a little bit more, get rid of them. I'm telling you, get rid of them at that point. The only people that deserve to travel with you are the people who see what you're seeing. 
And I was on and off in Bombay, so I got rid of all of this baggage and I went back to Bombay and I wanted to try auditioning with a renewed focus. The financial pressure of a city like Bombay, like, like with any other city like New York, uh, it's just too much to handle. So I started living in shit holes and I, I took a train uh, in the morning and from traveled from Burivli to Andheri, which is a place where I would go for an audition, which Andheri is where all the auditions happen, and I would do at least five auditions a day and then go back home. And at this point, uh, when I started understanding how Bombay works, is when I had another uh, incident in my life when I had a really serious injury. I had an accident and uh, I broke my back and uh, the doctors uh, said uh, it was a slip disc and I didn't even know what a slip disc was at that point so I immediately googled it and I was like, because I, I couldn't move, I was like completely paralyzed, left leg down and I was like, what's happening? I, why, why isn't anyone telling me anything? And the doctor came to me and he said, um, listen, uh, we want you to just take it easy for a couple of months, just uh, lie down, don't get out of your bed, do some physiotherapy, don't ever think of going to a gym because I was, uh, uh, I wanted to enroll in Shamak Gavar dance classes and uh, he said forget dance and everything for a few years, just try to recover from this injury. Uh, we're not performing surgery at this point because we think we, we want to try with physio. And I was like, what is all this? I, I, I don't have time and space for something like this to happen at this point in my life. I really, really need to go back there and start working, start trying to make stuff happen. And he gave me a three month deadline. In less than a month, I was on my feet in the next audition line. Because I, I had too much at stake to lie down in a bed for three months and wait for something to happen. I, I made that decision every time, every time you feel like this is impossible, somehow, somehow find a way to get up and, 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 and continue to do what you're doing. I got in line, I, it was, it was the, I'm not even exaggerating, it was the darkest, toughest, like I don't wish any of you have to go through something like that. So I would get a short film here, I would get an ad film there, and I would be like doing my survival jobs and I was like at it every day. And then in that, in that one moment when I really felt like maybe people are right. Maybe, maybe this is just a, a, an impractical way to go about things. You know, I, I did have those elements of doubt in my head. But something just told me that I have to try once more. And when I hit that moment, when, when, when I just uh, had that darkness in me, I just made that decision to try once more. And I got up and I read about this uh, stand-up uh, open mic that was happening. Uh, somewhere in Bombay and I wanted to go and participate in that uh, and I went and told them about my struggle story in Bombay and people started laughing and it went well and the next thing I know I was uh, given a five minute spot in a show in a stand-up show at which uh, AIB was performing and the rest of the story you guys know so and we did honest Indian weddings and and, 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 and one thing started just giving way to another. Suddenly there was a rhythm. Suddenly things started happening the way I wanted them to. The results, I, w I was walking into auditions and people were re reacting the exact opposite way to me. They were like, Yaar, humko to pehle se pata tha, yaar, tum actor ho. I was like, okay. And, and, and one thing led to another, someone saw me from uh, uh, Anil Kapoor Productions, the same film that I auditioned for three years back. Someone from me, saw me from that and called me for an audition. And uh, the next thing I know, I was uh, in this TV series called 24 uh, with Mr. Anil Kapoor. I wanted you to observe the pattern to how things work. Why did the tide turn my way? At what point? Why did it happen? I'm not saying that I'm super successful. Like I said, but, but something changed at a point, a certain point of time where I started getting the kind of results that I was hoping for. What is it that happened with me? As I see it, there are three to four things that come to my mind. Number one, I believed in whatever it is that I was doing 
when nobody was willing to believe. When nobody... It is tough. I'm not going to lie to you. It is tough. You're going to have elements of doubt here and there. But you have to have consistent belief that this is what I'm good at. This is what I know deep inside. Your soul knows that this is what I want to do. And you have to just be so stubborn with it that you just carry forward with that, with that intensity. And the, the second thing that I did, which I feel uh, why the results started happening, is I made sure if there are 10 doors to get to where I want to go, I made sure I was knocking every door. Each, I was there at each and every one of those doors to create or increase my chances of having a favorable result. There's a short film being made, I'm like, I'm gonna go do it. There's some music channel that's looking for a host that is wanting a host for a chat show, I'm like, I did it. There's a reality show that's happening where they're, where they're looking for actors and the, the actors are gonna be get into a film. I was there, six o'clock in the morning for that audition, for that line. If my back was telling me not to go, I was there. Because I, in my head, I didn't want to leave even a single door unopened. I didn't want anyone down the line, I didn't want myself, forget about people, I didn't want myself to look, at, look back at the journey and be like, I should have tried that. I tried everything. Make sure, don't lie to yourself, make sure you've tried every possible goddamn thing out there to make things happen for you. Because the most important thing is you need to monetize whatever it is that you're doing. Who wants to be an artist whose paintings never get sold? Who wants to run a restaurant that doesn't have customers? We all need to monetize whatever it is that we're doing. And you increase your chances of monetizing your dream by making sure you're trying everything possible out there. You're being smart and you're being focused and you're trying different things. Keep trying, keep trying. Something is got to give. And, and the third most important thing that I realized why results started happening and I want each and every one of you to do this. Don't worry about the results too much. Don't think about the results too much. Because the moment you start doing that, you put additional pressure on yourself. Don't think about the results. You know you're trying your best. You know you are giving it everything. That's enough. Trust me, that's enough. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, doesn't matter. Number, number four, when you're going through this phase, people are going to get crazy. People are going to like ask you so many questions. Every time someone comes up to you and says, Yaar, tum shaadi nahi kar rahe? Tumhare doosse sab ne shaadi kar li? Tum bachche nahi kar rahe ho? Tum job nahi kar rahe ho? Every time someone comes and asks you this, Bas! Bhog maalo, tumko kya karna hai? Girls, especially girls. If anyone comes and says to you, Yaar, you're 30, you still haven't married, Kya bolna hai? Bhog maalo. Tumko kya karna hai? Live in kar rahe hai, tum log shaadi nahi kar rahe ho? Bhog maalo. Tumko kya karna hai? I'm telling you, or people want you to have milestones. They want you to have milestones in your life and they want you to have those milestones at the exact time and in the exact order that, ha that happened for someone else. If someone else had a car at 25, you need to have it too. If someone else had a degree by 21 and a job and a wife and a house by 30, you need to have it too. People are always pushing you to go for those milestones. I say, screw the milestones. Doesn't matter. The guy sitting next to you, his, his fingerprints just don't match yours. How can your milestones match? How is that possible? You're going to get your milestones. You just focus on the journey. The milestones are going to happen organically when they're supposed to happen. And trust me, if a milestone doesn't fit into your journey, it was not meant to be a part of your journey. It was not meant to be a part of your journey. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. That's all I have to tell you guys. Uh, just take your time in figuring things out. Don't let anyone tell you there is a, there is a timeline or there is a pressure for doing things. Don't, but keep trying different things. Keep figuring out things. Try different things till you find something that you really enjoy doing. And once you find that thing, 
Once you find that thing, keep doing it. Be honest, work hard. Don't think about the results. Give it everything you've got. Give it everything you've got and be nice and kind and compassionate to every life form. Not just people, but animals too. Just be kind. That's all you have to do. It's just, just give more than you receive. Trust me, you do all this, great things are going to happen to you. Thank you so much, guys.